By the end of this video, you will know about the genitive case, something about prepositions, and will have seen some tips on how to make the genitive case easier to understand and learn. Hi, Rob McIver here. Let's talk about the genitive case and do so in a way that makes it easier for beginners. As you can see from the table which shows the frequency that cases occur in the Greek New Testament, the genitive case is used over 18,000 times. Hard to find a page without several genitive cases on it, in fact. So it's worth our while learning. We found it used in two contexts, one with prepositions and one to show possession. And we need to talk about each one of those things. But before we do, let's see what a genitive case looks like. You may already know the declension of the second declension masculine noun, logos. If you don't, well, here's a good moment to learn it, and you would want to know it really well. As you can see, the genitive masculine singular of logos is logu, and the genitive masculine plural of logos is log own, log own. And there is a corresponding article for the masculine genitive singular, to, or the genitive masculine plural, tone. Now there are two common uses of the genitive case. The first use is with prepositions, and the second use is to show possession. Well, let's start with prepositions. And you may be asking yourself, what is a preposition? Well, a preposition is a word a very small words usually, that show the relationship between things, often position. So we have from, out of, we have before, we have behind, we have within, and they can relate to time and other things as well. Now, about 25% of the uses of the genitive case are with prepositions. Two very commonly occurring prepositions that take the genitive case are apo and ek. Apo is used 646 times in the New Testament and ek 940 times in the New Testament. And like all prepositions, ek and apo are followed by some words which form a prepositional phrase and the nouns and pronouns and other words in that phrase that can take a case will all be in the genitive case. The genitive case shows how far the prepositional phrase extends. Now, I have a number of examples here, all taken from the Greek New Testament. For example, ek tu oiku, out of the house, and that's found in Acts 19. Ek tu leu, out of the people, from Acts 3. Ek tu theu, John 7.17. 7, Literally out of God, but we normally translate this in English as from God. Ex anthropon. There's a couple of interesting things about this. It's found in Luke 20. So why have we gone from ek to ex? That's to make it easier to say anthropos, and you'll see anthropos begins with a vowel. So ek turns to x in front of a vowel. And you'll notice that it's out of men, or we would translate that as from men. Let's look at some examples of apo. Apo to nomu, Matthew 5.18, from the law. Apo to Christu, from Christ. That's in Romans 9. And from 1 Corinthians 1, apo theu, from God. So if we're trying to make the genitive case simple, there's clearly one way to do that. That is to learn the preposition. And when you learn the preposition ek, you learn it as ek plus genitive. Or apo plus genitive. And that way you will know the genitive case goes with ek and the genitive case goes with apo. A second very frequent use of the genitive case is to show possession. Let's look at some examples and that, they will illustrate what we mean. Ho oikos to Petru, the house of Peter. You'll notice that the Greek puts to in front of Petru 
and sometimes in the New Testament we find an article in front of a name, especially the names of Jesus and Peter. So it's the Jesus and the Peter. Of course, we don't translate it as the Peter. So it is the house of Peter. It's a house that Peter owns. <laughs> well, in the New Testament, it's a little more subtle than that. It's Peter's mother-in-law's house, isn't it, we find in Mark. But the Greek does say the house that belongs to Peter. Ho oikos to Petru. And then we have ho oikos to Theu, the house of gods. In other words, God's house. You'll notice English has got two ways to express a possession. God's house, that's apostrophe S, or Peter's house, apostrophe S, or the house of Peter. So when you're translating from English into Greek, you need to translate the apostrophe S into the more familiar form of of. So God's house, you need to change into the form the house of God. Peter's house, the house of Peter. Ho anthropos to theu, the man of God. God's man. God possesses this human in some way. Ho huioi to Abraham, the sons of Abraham. Well, yes, it's not quite possession, is it? Uh, Abraham has sons. Yes, we will even say that in English. But it shows a relationship that the sons have with Abraham. He is their father. In other videos, I've shown that the subject must be nominative and that the direct object must be accusative and that the indirect object must be dative. We can add to that list and say possession must be expressed with a genitive. Now that we've met genitives, we need to expand our rules of translation just a little bit. The first three steps are exactly the same. First, find the verb. Second, find the subject of the verb, which is in the nominative case. Third, find the direct object of the verb, which will be in the accusative case. And finally, we fit everything else around those, including prepositional phrases formed from the prepositions ek and apo. Well then, how do we make the genitive case easier? Well, first of all, knowing your vocabulary is absolutely essential. Yes, practice your vocabulary. Even practice writing it out and translating from English into Greek and writing out the Greek. Now, you may think to yourself, well, I am only ever going to want to translate from the Greek New Testament into English. But it is better to overlearn so that these vocabulary items are really deeply embedded in your memory. And then when you meet them in the New Testament, you will recognize them almost instantly. Secondly, you need to thoroughly know the declensions of the nouns. There are first, second, and third declension nouns, which you will eventually meet. At the moment, you probably only know the second declension noun, logos. Well, when you meet a new noun, you need to know the pattern and be able to recognize the case endings when you see them in the Greek New Testament. Thirdly, you can look at the examples in this video and in the textbook and just see how the genitive case works. And finally, lots of practice. And might I recommend exercise five from my book, Beginning New Testament Greek Made Easier, as an ideal place to get practice in using the genitive case. This video is part of a series of videos I produced on the noun. In particular, you may be interested in videos on the nominative and accusative case and a separate video on the dative case as well. You can most easily find these videos by subscribing to my YouTube channel, NT Greek Made Easier, or by following me on x.com at robmciver2024. And hey, if you found this video helpful, why not let me know by clicking on the like button below or by clicking on the heart icon. 
Thank you.